My name is Peter Aini. I'm the founder and CTO of Mbili Academy. I'm a 2018 Mandela Washington Fellow. And uh, as I promised, I said I'm going to do the provide the video recording of the application masterclass that was done here in Abuja for the benefit of a lot of our friends all over Africa and in Nigeria that was not able to attend and have been requesting for the video. So in this video, I'm just going to explain some basic principle on uh, how to structure your application using the Eros journey. So the Eros journey is something that is a uh, international phenomenon. You can actually Google it if you have not heard about it before. It's a fantastic idea on how to structure stories. So and uh, we know that a lot of applications are going to be coming in for MWF. So telling your story in a unique way that can that can re resound and uh, people can remember your story. It's something that is very very important in the application process. So I'm going to be using my own personal story as a case study as I take us through this uh, basic principle of uh, telling story using the hero's journey. Hero's journey actually is a popular form of structure derived from Joseph Campbell Monomit. So from his book, we have this book that is called The Hero with a Thousand Faces. So the concept is simple. So Joseph Campbell discovered that there is a connection with every story and every great story that I've ever told. So from uh, so and these techniques have have been, have been true that every story have a hero that is moving from one faces to another and he discovered that there are twelve faces to an hero's journey and the concept of this is that we are all actually heroes in our own respective lives so this hero's journey is applicable to every one of us. So not just stories. So as you go through this presentation and each stage of the hero's journey, so I want you to understand that you should find a way to apply it to your own personal life as I'm going to use it to explain my own personal story as I use it in applying for the Mandela Washington Fellowship. And these concepts can be used for anything. A lot of great writers all over the world have used this 12th stage of hero story to tell their story. And I want to say that the... 12 stages of, hero, of, of, of this hero's journey is not something that is linear, so we should have that at the back of our mind. It is actually secular. So, and it doesn't have to happen sequentially, so it can actually alternate and happen randomly. So I hope you enjoyed this session, and uh, if you have any questions at the end of the day, I'm going to provide a link back where you can send me questions and I can anyway I can be of assistance to you. So I was privileged to actually uh, be part of the MWF this 2018 and uh, I was posted to Northwestern University Wonderful School, uh, Kellogg Business School precisely, which is now one of the best business school in the world. And uh, at this fellowship, I was actually with wonderful friends for other African countries. So you're going to be seeing their pictures in the in the background and I'm using all the things that we have shared together to actually tell the story and you see how the story actually progressed. So the first thing at the hero's journey is the ordinary world. So every one of us have the ordinary world. When you're seeing the movie, when you're starting up a story, so this is the normal state that we are in. So this ordinary world actually is, is a safe place of, for, for the hero itself. It's where, you know, that place that we are safe, maybe the job that we love that we don't want to let go. Maybe um, there's, there is someone that, the relationship that we had that we are not happy, but we're just like, okay, let me just stay there. Or, you know, the ordinary state just be maybe somewhere you had that where you love, your people, maybe in the state, you are in the state where you were born and you have been there for 20 years and everybody knows you, you are doing fine. So that is the ordinary world. So for, for connecting that to my own story, I, I would say that my own ordinary world actually, because this ordinary world can be any point in time before a decision is made. You understand? So this is where the heroes exhibit, exist before his present story begins. So that is where you exist. That is where you live. For instance, I am in Abuja right now. Oh, you understand? So that is the ordinary world that we exist in. 
So after the ordinary world, the number two stage of the hero's journey is the call to adventure. You know, when you are in your ordinary world, you, this, this is the space that you are happy. Okay, for instance, let, let, let me give you the, a background story of what actually happened to me when uh, I, I, I was a kid. You know, when I was in primary three, we, we have a very lovely family and we are doing very wonderfully well. And uh, there is the Friday... You know, that's, that's our ordinary world, that everything is, is rosy and is fine. And we just had a breakfast and every one of us are doing well. And uh, we have a breakfast on the Friday morning. So we are go supposed to go back to school. So after going to school, at about 1 p.m., someone came for me and they called me that Peter, I need to come home right now. So at that point, I have a feeling that something is not right. So what happened is... When I got home, I discovered that uh, two of my siblings were actually knocked down by a runaway driver and uh, both of them died immediately. So this incident actually changed a lot of things in my life. It, like, it's like a paradigm change to me, for me. And uh, my mom actually was not able to take the incident like, easily. And uh, it was she was so devastated and for like three months she wasn't herself she was like in the state of a coma and our business went down and everything so what i want to point out from this is that a journey began and uh in the first adventure we, we are all good we have a very happy family and before you know it there is a call to adventure you know a call to adventure could be anything so the hero's adventure begins with he received a call to action you could receive a call to action like so, sometimes it will be a direct threat to you, to your safety, your family, or your way of life, or your peace, or something just shake you up. So, for instance, this accident actually shook me up as a child, and uh, it's like it's like a call to adventure, and everything quickly changed rapidly uh, at that moment. And uh, it 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 was a very dark time for me, and even for the family itself. So that is call to adventure. So another call to adventure could be I remember very well. Uh, when I graduated, my, I finished my uh, associate degree and I got a job in Abuja. I was so excited. I was happy. I was fine. Like, everything is good. And uh, up three years into the job, I felt no satisfaction at all. So I was like, I can do more with my skill, with my ability and everything. And I, I, I told my fiancé then that I want to resign my job. And this, like, three months to we resign. Um, planning for our wedding and, and she was like why, why would you do that you know that that's a call for adventure there is an inner hodge for you to take an action so that inner hodge for you to do something so look at your own story look at your own personal life Has there be a point in time that you have had a call to adventure what was the call what is the inner hodge you had what is the specific event that changed everything that call you to do something different or what you are doing right now so note that down so that is your call to adventure. So after call to adventure, you know what uh, actually follow is actually the refusal of the call. You know, the thing is that it's really scary. There is no one that you saying that, well, oh, I want to do this great thing. Yeah, bam, you jump up to it and you start doing it. You start everything, start going on great. No, you know, when there is a call to adventure, there is this... Um, period that we refuse the call, refusal of the call. That's, that's the next stage. You know, I remember then when uh, I told my, my fiancé, okay, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to resign my job. I think I, should, I could do something great. I could, I could, because I'm a technology person, and I can go into technology space, use technology for social good, create solutions to, for the world in the health sector and everything. But there's this inner fear that comes. Three months to my wedding, I'm going to uh, resign my job. How, what are we going to be feeding on? How am I going to survive? So all these doubts, all these doubts, all these uh, fears that are coming to us. Have you ever have wake up in the morning and you have these brilliant ideas and you wrote them down? So, like in the next week, I'm just going to start working on this. And before you know it, the fear of, oh, can I do it? Look at my competition. Can I beat them? I don't even have enough money. I don't even have... These are all the fears. 
And even in your application, they want to see through you, right? You can tell your story. You can tell your fears. Every leader has this fear in us that we have this personal doubt in us. So I believe that we can... is a kind of a strength also. So when you are telling your story, don't forget to relate to when you refuse a call. You understand? And that, that is very, very important also. So after refusing the call, another stage of the hero's journey is meeting the mentor. You know, this is actually somewhere that is something that is wonderful. And you should understand that every journey that we are embarking on as human beings, there are some people that have been ahead of us. There are some people that have gone through that same thing. The fear that we face, the the doubts that we have in ourselves. There are some people that have been there and overcome it. And this happened in circle every stage of our life. You know, by the time I, when I to started in Billy, then as I, as, a, as a side project, I was scared. I was like, can I do this? So to be on the silver side, I was just trying to like do it on the side so that I don't really do it full time. And you understand. So we have all this fear in us, but. Luckily for us, we are able to meet someone that inspires us. So meeting the mentor is very tricky. So some people think that, okay, I have to have this uh, figure that just uh, a mentor that a lot of people can inspire you. You understand to do stuff. So look at your life. Who are the people that have inspired you to take that action? Even after you have refused, even after you have had the doubt in yourself. What are the people that have helped you to move forward? For instance, I will tell you a simple story about myself. When the incident about my siblings happened, I lost interest in education and I wasn't doing well in school. So for a very long time, I was having bad results. So until one day that I had this um, session, I have this. I, I, I took my results and I was going home on the last day of school. And I see this uh, group of seniors gathering under a tree. And I moved closer to them. I was looking at what are they admiring, what are they looking at. And I saw a guy that had nine distinctions in his results. And that day changed everything for me. I was like, if this guy can have nine distinctions, why can't I do it also? And that is the mentor. Mentor can be something that inspires you. Someone that give you an advice. Someone that give you a practical training. Someone that nudge you to that you can do it. So when you are crafting your MWF application, these are the things you have to put in there. What are the things that nudge you? What are the people that inspire you to take up leadership position? To take up the work that you are doing? So you have to be able to relate that also. So another thing is crossing the threshold. So this is where the, you, know, you are ready now. You have met the mentor, the mentor have known you, you have gotten the inspiration, and you, you have moved. You understand? So, and at this point, there is, there, is no, there is no turning back again, because you have already dived into it. You have already dived, and you wanted to take action. So that is crossing the threshold. And after crossing the threshold, you know, immediately you dive into something, the test come. Allies shows up. Enemies shows up. So you have to relate that with that story also. So... You have, in your application, you have to relate what are the tests, what are the, what are the allies, what are the enemies, what are the, what, what are the obstacles that you face in your way of doing what you are doing right now. You understand? So these things have a very unique way of, of connecting us to the people that are actually reading our own application. Number seven, approach to the inmost cave. You know, this is where you, you face the test and the most cave may represent many things in the hero story, such as actual location in which lies a terrible danger. So when you face your test, the enemies, the allies, sometimes we, we, we reach this innermost case where we are so scared, where we feel like backing down, where we feel like, what can I do, where we feel like... So as the hero approaches the cave, he must make final preparation before taking the final leap into the great unknown. So at, at this inmost in cave, this is a place you have to reach out to your own energy, right? So you have to explain this dark area of your, of your life. So another thing we have is, is the ordeal. So the supreme of this is one of the, the, uh, the great tests that an hero faces in life. So what, what was the biggest challenge that actually you have faced in life that have affected what you're doing? 
So now from from this audio, that's why you have to show where you have your leadership skills, all the test, all the knowledge you have gotten for your from inspiration, from your mentors and everything. How you because in your fellowship application, they're going to be asking you. What are the biggest challenges you have faced? How have you overcome them? You understand? So these are the things that you need to relate with. So how do you how do you discuss those things? So and after the ordeal is the reward. So every challenge, every ordeal comes with a reward. Now this is where you discuss about your own impact. What are the impacts you have made? For instance, one of my own um, greatest challenges is actually starting out in Billy. You know, when I got the idea, I shared it with his friend, and people feel like, wow, this is a wonderful idea. And uh, a friend of mine actually sent me, uh, I started working on it and everything. And I started, I formed a team, we started working. We don't have any money, but we started bootstrapping at the scratch and it was so tough for us. So what I, a friend now sent me a link that, okay, Peter, your idea look good. You can actually apply for uh, this competition by Union Bank. And uh, I felt like, okay, well, why not? I'll give it a try. So we put our documentation together and everything and we applied for it. And before you know it, we were selected among the best 10. And I was also among these finalists and the winners of the Union Bank Centenary Innovation Award. And it, it kicked off. So that is the reward. So like someone told me that the world will reward you for trying. You know, if I've never tried out the Mbele idea, if I've never put it on paper, if I've never started something, I will not even get the reward. So... The reward is what are the impact that you have made after facing the challenges in your place of work, after facing the challenges of starting your business and you started them eventually. So what is the reward? What is the impact on people, on your, on your even your own personal self? And what is the impact in, of, of with your work? What is the impact? So that's the reward that you get. So after that, we have the road back. You know... After you go back through this enlightenment, the challenges, the reward, so there is a road back also. This stage is the hero's journey represents a reverse echo of the call to adventure. So because I told you in the beginning that the hero's journey is actually a loop. It's not something that is just linear. So and the 12th stage actually is resurrection. So resurrection is actually, this is the climax in which the, the heroes have his final and most dangerous encounter with death. So sometimes these are the point that you want to like give up on your dreams. These are the point that you want to say no. Even after the reward have come, I remember when we won the Union Bank Innovation Award. I, we have made the promise, we have said we are going to change the world, we are going to make education accessible to everyone all over the world. At this point in time, you can't even sleep. So that is where the fear comes in. So the resurrection is you face the the biggest uh, challenge of, and you were able to. So now, the next is actually return with Alexa. So returning with Alexa is actually means that uh, after the resurrection, after you face the big ordeal, you were able to come up with a, a gift it could be an information, it can be a solution, it can be a new light. So because you are now a changed person, so everything you have learned, everything you have gone through as, a, as, as a, in the hero's journey will now make you better. So now, when you are, when there is, after that point, you see that there is another call for adventure. So a call to adventure is a circle. These things happen in our life and everything. So... And to every journey, call to adventure, to all these stages, there is always a reward that we get at the end. So, uh, at this point, I I know the hero's journey can be, at first, it's very complicated, but it's, it's actually very simple. You could go online and check more about the hero's journey and how you can uh, learn about all these steps. And it's very, very wonderful. It actually helped me in applying for my... Mandela of Washington Fellowship in sharing my own personal story. You understand? So, because stories are everything. The way we share our stories have to be powerful. So, you have to start from somewhere, your ordinary world, and then move to the call to adventure. What is the hot nudge that you have? After that, you move to, we have the refusal of the call, which is normal. You know, sometimes, we as human, we don't want to talked about the challenges and we just feel like, okay, yeah, I have this idea and I do it. No. Sometimes 
there are challenges we are scared so let's you can communicate your fear in a very powerful way and because we are all human beings right leaders also have fears in them so and fears is a good thing also so you can you, you can share your fears and everything so for me actually i've been able to turn my own personal story and tell it in such a way that it's so powerful and it actually flows with with my career and another thing you have to look at is your in, in applying for your mandela washington fellowship that is a personal statement this personal statement is one of the crucial uh parts of the uh, fellowship application so i think you need to like tell your story in a in a wonderful way uh and you the, all the story you have to connect we have three tracks. We have the leadership, we have the entrepreneurship and public management. So look at the track you're applying for. Look at your journey and how it relates to all these tracks. So that you can use it to tell a very powerful story that will resonate with people that are reviewing your application. So uh, I, I actually want to share this um, statistics with us because uh, Manila Professionalship is a very prestigious uh, fellowship. So in 2018, 698 fellows were selected across uh, 49 countries in sub-Saharan Africa. So in Nigeria alone, uh, like 60 people were selected in Nigeria. And um, in Nigeria reached about, uh, I think up to 11,000 application. And overall we have 31% in business, 29% NGO. NGO is the same thing as lead and civic leadership and 24% public. So, and why I'm sharing this statistic with us is that we should know that uh, they are wonderful people. They are you guys are leaders already, doing great things uh, across Africa, and making our continent great. So what we just say is that what is going to set you apart as a leader is your home personal story and how you are going to be able to tell it. You know, I can't explain to you that okay, write your application this way, write this, but just go through the hero's journey, look in depth within yourself. And tell your own true story. You understand? I've had a lot of people ask me that, Peter, can you send us your application? I'm, I'm saying that sending you applic my own application is not going to help you. Because it's a personal story. It's a personal journey. And everything you put into your application is going to influence your experience when you get, when you were selected. That's how it goes. So I would say that tell your own story. Tell your truth. As powerful as you can, share your fears, success, and impact. Also, those are the things that make wonderful stories. So when you share it, people are able to relate with your story, because uh, if, you, if if you share a lie, and you have a different experience entirely, you have someone else's experience. So because the people that are on the selection board are going to make your selection and design your experience based on all those stories and information you provided them. So I will say to you that craft your story, look into these techniques. It's going to help you to be able to craft your story very well. And another thing I want to point out is that never lie. Because if you lie, they're going to see through you. After the, the application is the first step. After the review, there is going to be an interview stage. So you're going to be called for an interview. And, uh, you know, when you're, when you're not telling your own story, there is a way people can see through you. But if you are telling your story, I tell you, you're going to be passionate about it because it's about you, it's your story, you know what you're saying and you're going to be bold about it, you understand? So let's try and uh, look deep within yourself, turn your business your, into a story, tell the fears, tell the people that inspire you, talk about the, uh, the impact you have made in the life of people and the transformation that you two you have gained and how you have gone through difficulties that you have been able against all holds to make things happen. You understand? Those are the things that reflect and resonate with people that are going to be reviewing your application. So, and uh, lastly also, I'll, I'll say that this is my uh, contact information. So, you can get in touch with me actually and uh, on WhatsApp. You can get in touch with me my email. You can send in your application. I can help you review and give you feedbacks on your application. And uh, you can also check out uh, imbiliacademy.org so, and see what we are doing. And uh, we are also looking out to volunteer with us. We are, vol we are always looking for volunteers all across the continent to work with us and give you the opportunity to be able to learn and uh, also. And 
in your application, another thing that is there is we have a place for additional documents like five. So if you have other documents that you think uh, we bootstrap your application, I think you you should you should uh, put them into it also. So I used to ask people, a lot of people ask me that okay, what about because I've not done so many things, I don't have ten years, seven years experience and everything. I would say that it's not about having 10, 20 years experience. It's about your own unique journey and the impact you want to see in Africa as a leader. The impact you want to see in your own little corner. No matter how small your story is, no matter how big it is, tell it well. That's the most important. Just tell that story. You understand? So I'm going to say that it's, you should just try. So because there, there is not actually... Um, uh, there is no crime in, in, in trying. And another thing I would say is that get involved in the Mandela Fellowship Network. Is there are a lot of courses online that you can take, develop yourself, and also take advantage of those resources. They are really, really wonderful. I've taken a couple of courses on, on, the, uh, on, on Yali, and it has really, really helped me also to develop as a leader. So there are a lot of resources. Join the Facebook group. When you join the Facebook group, you can ask questions, ask other fellows, have mentors, speak to people. There are a lot of people that are Mandela Fellowship fellow across the continent. They are there willing to help you. And if you want to reach out for me also for mentorship in business and entrepreneurship, technology, and start getting started with your ideas. These are the things that I love to speak on a lot. And I'm going to be doing some video series very soon on social entrepreneurship and getting started with your idea. So I hope this... Um, presentation help a lot so in this presentation i'm not really going deep into the application i'm just giving you a framework that you can use to tell your story in a very unique way so and i hope it's helpful so if you have any question drop it on my email and uh, also check out our website and uh, i'm on facebook uh peter Ayeni. i'm on instagram peter Ayeni official and i'm on Twitter also, Peter INA underscore. So just follow me on, on those network and if you mention, I'll follow you back. Thank you so much for your time and have a nice day.